Hi, my name is Victoria Howell. I'm the instructor for the A. Richard Newton Distinguished Innovator Lecture Series, and I have been teaching the series for 16 semesters now, and we've had over 200 speakers. From those speakers, we've heard incredible stories and received insights and pearls of wisdom. And the Best of Newton series is a combination of those uh, under different topics. The topic tonight is how to talk to an angel. What's an angel, you may ask? Well, if you've started a new venture, an angel is someone who'd be one of your early investors or even advisors, someone that you might talk to even before you tried to uh, get venture capital funding. So it's really, really important to know how to talk to uh, an angel. So let me set the stage for you about how the Newton series works. Normally, on a Tuesday night at five o'clock, you'll find me in front of the screen over here. In this case, it says, welcome to the Newton Distinguished Innovator Lecture Series. And you see that Sue J. King Liu, who's the Dean of the College of Engineering at UC Berkeley, is in conversation with Mike Schrepfer, fondly known as Shrep, the CTO for Facebook. In their conversation, we have highlights, lowlights, their journey. Students get to ask questions. And from listening to so many of these conversations, I've been able to pull together eight key tips on how you can talk to an angel. Tip number one, this comes from Jessica Ma. She's a Cal grad and founder and CEO of the enterprise software company in De Niro. They do accounting for businesses. Her tip is to consider everyone a potential investor, and she lives by that. When she was at Cal, she would go to her classes and scope out the smartest people and not only ask them to help her with her homework, but also figured out which one she could work with and asked a few of them to co-found in De Niro with her. Also at Cal, she started an entrepreneurship club. Now, she was able to get a lot of access to individuals, to VCs, to entrepreneurs to come and speak at the club. But the tricky part and the clever part was that she would ask them for coffee afterwards. And while they were having coffee, she would pitch different ideas. She was able to build this ecosystem of entrepreneurs and advisors. And when it came time for them to look for angel investing in Ingeniero, she already had this great group of contacts. Tip number two, for every fruitful connection, several more must be made. Also Calgrad, Serbi Sarna, founded Envision Medical Device Company that was sold not that long ago, very successfully to Boston Scientific. Sarbi came and talked and had this incredible chart with all this web of connections and who you can talk to. And she wanted everybody to remember that it's not necessarily the first contact you make that's fruitful. You have to keep making them. She tells a story where she was talking to a friend about Envision. Her friend said, you know, you should probably talk to my mother. She talked to the mother. The mother said, well, I have another friend that maybe you should talk to. That friend had another person that Sarbi was to get in touch with. That's at least four different connections. That last person ended up being an investor in her company. So you have to keep on going. The other thing when you're making these connections is to start your connection speaking about the person, not about you. It's not for you to say, hey, I'm an entrepreneur, I have this idea. You kind of want to start saying, you came to my attention because of something you did. And because of that, I think you might be interested in my idea. Uh, I tell a story often, um, Anna Ariola is one of our favorite speakers from the Newton Distinguished Innovators Series. Not only is she a tech leader, she's also a leader in the queer community. Uh, she has a fascinating background where she worked at Apple, coming out initially with the iPhone. She went to work at Theranos. Now that's a good story. Um, and most recently, she's a general manager at Microsoft. When I asked Anna to speak, I actually reached out to her on LinkedIn, which isn't always the best platform to do this. Um, but I saw that she had had a really fascinating um, article that she'd written and, and she was talking about. And I followed up on that and I said, you know, it would really benefit Cal students to hear a bit more from you. And that happened to work. So when you're writing, which often is the case in today's environment, when you start that email, don't start with your name. Don't start that you're a Cal student. Start with you. 
you came to my attention uh, because I saw this and I think we'd have something to talk about. Start with you, talk about them. Similar to that, tip number four, keep abreast of events in the people that you're reaching out to's lives. Before you write your email, before you pick up the phone, look at what's happening in Google News. Um, I had read an article on Mike Schrepfer, who's in this picture with CEO, COO, excuse me, Sheryl Sandberg. Um, Mike had been interviewed by the New York Times. It was on the cover of the business section. He was talking about Facebook and um, how he was feeling about different Facebook postings. And again, I wrote on the heels of that article and said how much I thought the students would benefit from hearing from him. That was successful. So know what's going on in people's lives and leverage that to reach out to them. Tip number five, do your research. It's not just enough to know what's happening in their uh, events or happening in their lives, but do your research. Do your research on the people that you're reaching out to and also on your own business. Scott Kapoor is one of the co-founders and a managing partner for Andreessen Horowitz. Scott tells two interesting stories. One, he talks about all the individuals who reach out to Andreessen Horowitz and say, hey, I think you'd be interested in investing in my company. But what they don't know is what companies Andreessen has invested in in the past, um, who they tend to work with. Uh, you need to know if your product is hardware, there are certain VCs or certain angels that you might want to approach. If your product is software or AI, it's a different set. So do your homework before you reach out. Now, here's an interesting story. Scott talks about a time when a company came to approach them, and the idea sounded interesting, but they weren't quite convinced. The company happened to be Airbnb when they're trying to go for their Series A investment. So Scott said that when they were talking about the market, they talked about disrupting the hotel market, and Andreessen Horowitz at that point just didn't feel like the market was large enough, and so they passed on that round. Had the people pitching been able to articulate that we're not just disrupting hotel, but creating a whole new way of people for people to travel, that probably could have been uh, better. But you should know that the next time that Airbnb came around, Scott Cooper and Andreessen sure enough did invest. Tip number six, listen to feedback. Really write it down. Mary Lou Jepson came and talked to us. She's the founder of Open Water, One Laptop Per Child. She's also Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential. She was in executive positions at Facebook, at Oculus, and she's currently working on a camera that can go into your body as part of Open Water. She's truly a genius. She came in to pitch an idea that she had to a group of investors around a table. She pitched it, she finished silence. Not positive silence. She was devastated, but what she did was ask everybody around the table to tell her what they thought was wrong with her idea, and she wrote it down. She wrote it down so that they knew that she was listening. She took all the, that feedback, worked on it, pivoted her idea, and weeks later approached the same group of investors, told them what she'd done and why, and sure enough, they ended up trusting her and investing in her. Tip number seven, position yourself to stand out. You have pictures of two Cal founders, actually three Cal founders here. Shilpa Shaw, who founded Kuyana, the clothing company, is uh, with her partner, Carla, and you also have Komal Ahmed. Komal founded Copia. Copia actually um, takes food to people who need it most. If there is a conference and there's food left over, she ensures that it gets delivered to those in need. So both of those ideas and how I've just described them are meaningful, but not enough to stand out. Position yourself to stand out. What is Kuyana's premise? Their premise is welcome to fewer, better things. They are one of the few companies that received funding early on when COVID hit. They've been extremely successful. For Coleman's company, it's so easy to think of it as a nonprofit. It isn't. She positions it as a technology company. And how does she make it stand out? 
she talks about food recovery powered by technology. You need to be able to position yourself to stand out when you're talking to an angel. And tip number eight, this is something repeated by so many of our entrepreneurs and VCs who come. And it comes from Michael Seibel, who happened to be our closing keynote for last semester. Michael is a co-founder of Twitch, and he's currently CEO for Y Combinator. He says that so many people come and say, I wanna be an entrepreneur, but that's not enough. What you need to do and remember to do is solve a real problem. When you're talking to an angel, tell them about the real problem that you're solving and why you're passionate about it. I hope these eight tips will help you on your journey. I hope I'll get a chance to see you on a Tuesday night for Industrial Engineering 95, 195, and 295. You can find more information on the SCET website under Newton Series. And currently, we're in the format that you see where we're on Zoom. I wish you the best of luck in your journey and thank you for listening.